If you want to give life to your song and make your voice way more interesting and capture the audience with your storytelling, keep on watching this video because I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. My name is Orgelina, I'm a vocal coach and I specialize on teaching people how to sing in a functional and holistic manner, which means the smart way. If you're interested in improving your voice range today, go to the description below where you're going to find my three singing secrets to expand your voice range. Let's go to today's topic. The topic of how to make your songs interesting that has to do with the interpretation part of learning a song. In the way I teach, the songs are learned in three steps. Learning the music, the vocal technique, and the interpretation. And that is where my vocal dynamics come to play. Now, once you learn your vocal technique and your music, that's when you can start playing around that kind of things. Vocal effects, dynamics, interpretation, acting techniques, a lot of things. Right. The reason why I chose to do this video today is because I had a student yesterday that brought a song. The song, I believe it was Cocaine by Eric Clapton. So this is a very talented student, but he's just starting with singing. So he wanted to sing it with his guitar. He has a guitar and plays very nicely, but told me that the song kind of sounded flat, not in a pitch sense, but it sounded kind of boring, stable. I took a listen to the song and then I noticed that one of the things that give that song contrast is the instrumentation and also the counter melodies that the guitar does. There are lots of little details that make the song really interesting and that support the vocals as well. But this student only has a guitar and wants to play with, with the guitar, with the resources uh, he has. He was very smart in telling me I need to make it more interesting with my voice. I thought that was brilliant. So we took a look at how to cover some songs. Now, since this student is just starting out with singing, I needed to find something that is suitable for beginners. Usually I don't start with interpretation techniques until a little bit later on, because at the beginning, technique is what gives you the possibility to get those interpretation techniques. But I thought it was appropriate this time. So we decided to use the tools of vocal dynamics. It's super important that you start working with your dynamics soon in your singing training. Usually with kids and teens, I work with the raw school syllabus, which goes from a pre-grade to grade one to grade eight. Debut grade doesn't have dynamic words, but grade one does. And debut is supposed to be done in about four or five months. So that means that quite soon you start working with your fortes and your pianos. Within dynamics, you can go super deep into that and be super fancy and differentiated. But the first thing you have to resolve is to be able to sing your pianos and your fortes, to be able to not sing everything the same intensity. Now, when we're talking about sound and we're talking about intensity, I mean how loud the sound is. The first thing you have to do is identify your piano and your forte. In singing, piano doesn't mean that instrument, it means soft. Piano means soft, forte means loud. There are some other um, dynamic marks that you have to learn later on, like fortissimo and mezzo forte and mezzo piano, pianissimo, that kind of things. The first step, can you differentiate piano from forte? Super important. Play around this. Normally when people start singing and I tell them, give me a piano and a forte with the same song, maybe repeating a phrase, it sounds super similar. I can't tell which one is which. Well, I can't, but it's super subtle. When you are practicing these dynamics, go wild. Make the softs super soft. Make the fortes super fortes. So, and this is super important because when you are working with vocal style and interpretation, forget about the technique. I mean, the technique we use it is going to be there, but we are focusing on something else. And, and vocal technique will support that. For example, you can use the opening of the mouth and the activity of your articulators and the depth of your breath to support loud sounds, while you can use other resources to support your more softer sounds. If you haven't already, maybe you can just pause this video and just say one line of your favorite song, say it super soft, then super loud. You're gonna start hearing in the songs that you come across, you, you're gonna start identifying these pianos and fortes all of a sudden. Maybe you didn't do it before. Even if you didn't identify them, that really contributes to make the sound interesting. And sometimes the listener doesn't know what happened, but something happened. Now, this is something you will use in a normal conversation. And this is the magic of contemporary music, particularly. In a normal conversation, dynamics change. Once you start telling your story, we are chatting to a friend, the dynamics 
change, they go soft, they go wild, depending on your emotions. Because you don't have a static emotion that lasts for the whole conversation. It changes. The more you talk, the more you experience emotions in different degrees. Any result is the same. That makes you connect with the audience more, makes the song more interesting, makes it more healing for you as well. It helps you process your emotions, but I'm not going to get into that, although it's a very interesting topic. All right, so next thing I want you to do is to think about numbers, 1 to 10, where 1 is going to be as piano as you can get, so as soft as you can get, and 10 is going to be as loud as you can get. And remember, this is just an exercise. You are not going to sound like that in the songs. But understanding this contrast and this gap is going to help you to be subtle and smart about the in-betweens. So go wide, be exaggerated, go super soft, and then super loud with the same phrase of the song that you should have chosen by now. So, for example, if I wanted to sing, I want it that way, this would be a one. In a 10, it could be... Probably the mic. I want it that way. And also, by the way, those ones and tens will change depending on what genre you are singing. But again, that's also another topic. So, you got your one, you got your ten. Get the same phrase of the song. Pause this video. Where is your five? Where is your two? Play around that until that becomes super clear to you. Once you have done this, grab the song that you are learning. The good exercise to do is to grab every different section of the song. So you have a, maybe there's one, a pre-chorus, chorus. And you put a different number randomly from one to ten, randomly with a different number on the different sections of the song, or get someone from your family to randomly write numbers from one to ten, and then, of course, sing it, trying to respect that number in intensity. You're gonna see that the song already sounds more interesting, even if you're not doing it thinking about your meaning. That you're doing it randomly, and you already start doing things on movement. That's what actually happened with my student yesterday. When he started the lesson, yes, the song was kind of static. And just by doing this exercise, when he was singing, I was starting to feel something about the song. I was more engaged and enjoying it more. So it works. All right, so the next step, the way you're going to be using this for in a more practical way is, of course, in within the same section of the song, only one number, usually not realistic. Usually it changes. You can change numbers within the same word. So go wild, play around that, maybe try different numbers in each line, maybe try different numbers every two words, play around it. Once you have explored these dynamics quite a bit, you are going to have a lot of information and a lot of tools to use dynamics in a way that support the meaning of your song. Yes, you don't want to make it static, unless it is for a very good reason, but it can be a really, really good way to, in an easy way, with, with resources that you already have, because your voice already is able to do soft and loud, because you do it when you speak. So use what you already have. And you're gonna see that you don't need to be an experienced singer, you don't need to be a super advanced singer to make songs beautiful. The more advanced you are, the more tools you have. But if you are creative, and you put the time that it takes, even if you are just starting, you can make a song very beautiful and you can move the audience with it. And before I go, I would like to give you a few examples. The three examples that I was thinking of songs that maybe give you a lot of possibility to develop this. The first time ever I saw your face, I really love that song. Also, the song Make You Feel My Love, Bob Dylan song, but probably you know it by Adele as well. And uh, finally, of course, cocaine. Although cocaine, when I heard that, I could see that the vocals are heavily supported by the music. Play around this tool. It can make you really sound like a much more advanced singer than you might be if you are new to singing, just by being able to manage dynamics how you will do, as you do when you are normally speaking. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like this video and subscribe to my channel so you won't mess out on my future videos.